From the Argentine, playing white, Miguel Quinteros, against playing black from the United Kingdom, Raymond Keane. And this is a game that Raymond Keane would undoubtedly like to have missed. Uh, he said that he hoped that Quinteros wasn't going to come to this tournament at all, and when he heard that he was coming, he said he hoped that he wouldn't be in the same group. Because the fact is that very fine player though he is, Keane has a very mediocre record against Quinteros. In fact, he's never won, he's drawn a few and lost a few. And in his group, Group B, it's absolutely vital tonight for Keane that he should win to get up to the top level with Lobron. And for Quinteros, it's absolutely vital that he should win, even to stay in contention, because if he loses, he'll certainly be eliminated. Bill Hartston here has usual comment, and why is it, do you think, that uh, Keane has such a wretched record against Quinteros? What is the sign that Quinteros has over him? I think it's a, it's a question of the clash of styles. Keane has a, a very calm, cultivated positional style. Um, he likes the game to be very predictable, to know what's going on, and absolutely despises messy positions uh, and doesn't usually play very well in them. Um, Quinteros has an especial talent for, for messing games up, and he loves games where pieces are flying around all over the place. So we can understand why Ray doesn't like playing against this gentleman. Well, in fact, this game has started in a very uh, steady, rather serenely gentle sort of way. Uh, before we join it, let's just have a look at the opening they played with Quinteros White moving first. Although Quinteros has an attacking style, he usually plays his slow positional openings, which is strange, but there's always a chance to mess up the game later. This is an English opening. Black preparing to bring his bishop to this nice position on the long diagonal. And that's the first real decision point in the game. Quinteros has chosen to advance his pawn in the centre, going for more space. Beginners are very often told, of course, that they should develop their pieces before they make a second move with their pawns, but there can be exceptions. Oh yes, it's wrong to make too many pawn moves in the opening, but taking control of the centre of the board, as White has done here, is a worthwhile objective. This is a King's Indian defence now, though it started as an English. And this is the move that's really set the pattern for the whole game. Black has chosen to play this very blocked centre position. The pawns really wedged up against one another in the middle. Um, it's the sign of a, a slow game with manoeuvring around this blocked centre, with white trying to break open the position later with either f4 or b4 advances, and black trying to get counterplay by advancing his pawns to b5 or f5. But a very slow game in prospect. If Quinteros likes uh, slightly chaotic games, uh, why perhaps didn't he take that black e pawn en passant? He could have. Black would have taken with the bishop and got rather good piece play. I think it's just that he likes to keep this space advantage in the centre. He's happy to wait around and push a bit later. The chaos will come later. The whole of this opening, really, has been rather like starting some great symphony with an adagio. Extremely slow, subtle development. This was the position they reached after 32 moves. Bill. Well, as you can see, all the pieces are still on the board, uh, so no exchanges yet. Um, Quinteros has made some progress on the king side of the board, advancing his pawn to f5, uh, which gives him the basis of hopes for an attack on that wing. But Keane's really massed all his pieces on that side, ready for the position to be broken open. And with his last move, Quinteros brought his king from the safe square c1 one square forward, and it looks as though he's planning something on the other side of the board. Well, let's join the game with Quinteros White to play his 33rd move. I think I have to break the queen side. That is my only chance, because if the pawn going to be in b4, then I can go with my rooks. So it's better than doing now, rook b1. I don't like this much. I haven't got much space for the pieces. This bunch on the king's side, not going anywhere. 
but he's trying to play b4 and break things open on the queen side. I could stop that. I could play my pawn to a5 and just seal everything up. But then I just have to wait around and see what he can do. I don't want to do that. But maybe this move b4 isn't isn't really going to help him. If he plays b4, it's going to leave the c5 square open for a knight. It's also going to weaken his pawn on a4. He's a bit short of time. This, this time limit in this, this tournament is very fast. It's much faster than the normal time limit in international tournaments. And he's used a lot of time. I've kept about half an hour in hand. Maybe I can just let him play b4, and then when the position breaks open, perhaps I can swing a trap on him or something. I'm just going to let him carry it, carry it out. I'll let him play b4. I'll move the bishop from d7 to make a square for a knight, and then just wait and see if something turns up on the queen side. Bishop e8. Mm hmm. He let me play before. I I see now the knight is coming to c5. But it's my only chance. I have to play the queen side. If not, uh, I don't have any more chances and. This game is very important. I have to try all my best, so I play the queen side and before, even if I'm short of time, I have to do it. Now I could defend the queen side with knight to d7 and just bolster everything up. But that's not the idea. I don't mind if I lose the b pawn. It makes some open lines on the queen side. So I take on b4. Oh! Oh, it's the first capture. We've played all these moves, and nothing's been exchanged so far. Well, I have the honour of taking the first piece. C takes b4. Well, OK, I have to take, and then we'll see what happens with the knight. Maybe it's a strong, maybe not. But I have to take anyway. Rook day and b4. OK, I can give up this lousy pawn on b6. Knight d7. He offered me a pawn, but... Then if I leave my bishop, then going to be a strong his position after the open the lines for his black bishop. So it's better that I don't take it, and I put more pressure. Oh, but what about the knight and h5? Yes, I think it's better. I'm going to attack the knight, so he have to go back, and then I'm going to try my rooks in the b1. So I can put more pressures in, in the b6 point. Bishop e2. Damn. Well, of course, only a half whip would take on b6. I've got to move my knight out of h5. Rotten square, anyway. Knight, back from h5 to f6. Only a few minutes left. So I have to attack the queen side now. Now I have to put more points in the king side and to let him do something on the queen side so I can bring my rook and my pieces. So I play g4. No, he's still not taking the pawn. I just carry on with my plan. Knight from d7 to c5. That's the square it's been aiming for ever since he played b4. Knight c5. Only one minute left. And he offered me a pawn, and, but I cannot take it. Then he's going to take an e4 and I'm going to lose my queen, oh my god. I have to protect the pawn. With the bishop or with the queen? No, maybe with the bishop. If he take my bishop, it's okay. It doesn't play so well there in, in d3. So I play bishop d3. Yes, of course he's protecting the pawn on e4. Sometimes when people are short of time, they make the most ridiculous mistakes. If he hadn't done something like that, I could have taken an e4 and won his queen. But now I have to reinforce the queen side a bit. Now he's really threatening to take on b6. So, I bring over the other knight. Knight on f6 to d7 to defend b6. So, a few seconds, I have to play right away. What can I do? I play h4 or I bring my rook and b1? No, 
or maybe the bishop, the black bishop like to escape from f6. So I play h4. This is looking serious. I thought his idea was to pile up on the queen side, but now, now he's coming on the king side as well. Hmm. He's threatening g5 and h5. My god, this is an avalanche of pawns on the king side. Maybe I'm going to lose a piece. Well, I've got to get the queen out of the way. I can't let him fork my queen and my bishop by playing pawns to g5 and f6. And still he's short of time, maybe he'll do something stupid. Let's get the queen out of the way. Queen d8. Maybe ten seconds on my clock, I have to move. I have to move. Something. Okay, I'm going to move the bishop and protect everything. Bishop c2. Well, they've reached a time control that and a very great uh, unhappiness or misery, despite Keane's hopes to the contrary. I think it was rather brave of Quinteros breaking open the position when he was so short of time and nothing was really going on. He could easily have waited until move 40 and then thought about what to do, but he broke open the position earlier. Now it's getting a little bit wild. At last, something's happening in this game. Real wildness, or is it still the sort of uh, rather controlled game you were saying that Keane likes? It's Quinteros who's playing with, with great control here. Um, it, it's a very good illustration of how you should play an attack in this sort of position because he's combining moves on the king's side this g4 h4 f5 business with an attack on the b6 pawn and in blocked positions like this you don't win just by attacking on one side of the board unless the opponent goes very wrong you win by maintaining threats on both of them and he's doing that very well well let's go back to the game it's keen who's got to do something about the threats keen's 41st move coming up well, he's got past the time problem, and his position survived. It's looking grim on the king's side. I can't move anything, but maybe I can, I can thrust this b-pawn down his guts. He's been refusing to take it for so long. Maybe I can just force him to take it, just give it away, and then get some counterplay on the, on the black squares on the queen's side. I can't do anything on the king's side at all. I can't move any pawns. The rooks and the bishop are paralysed. I don't have any constructive moves. No, I think that's the idea. I'm going to, to play b5 and give up the pawn. And now we have to play the whole of the rest of the game in one hour. And this could be very complicated. I free some more squares for the pieces that way. And again, perhaps I can get him short of time and stir up some complications here. Anyway, I don't see any other active possibilities here. I'm going to play b5, sacrifice a pawn. b6 to b5. Oh my god. He would like to open the position by giving a pawn. Can I take with the a pawn? No, I can take. I think he played with the queen and attack my pieces. So I have to take with a c pawn. I should have said the sacrifice. And we'll see what happens. C4, take B5. Now I have to take back. I have to capture. And then if he takes with the pawn again, I can still play Queen A5. So he has to take with a knight. And then I get some time to disentangle my pieces. So, A6 takes B5. I should take the pawn. I cannot take with the rook because he played Knight F6. And I have my rook and my, my g pawn. Okay, only choice. I have to take with the knight and a3. Yes, I have to take knight a3 for b5. Yes, that's the best way to take this pawn. Now if I play queen a5, hitting his rook, he just defends the rook. He plays the other rook over to b1. And then my d-pawn on d6 is hanging to his knight. No, that's no good. The trouble is, this, this traffic jam on the king's side, I've got four pieces completely locked in by my two bishops. The rooks can't move at all. It's his bishop on e8 that's the problem. I should have put it somewhere else. How can I break this congestion? Well, maybe if I put the knight back on f6, 
and I threaten g4. And also, yes, I can get rid of the knight on b5. I can swap off my bishop for his knight on b5. And then maybe I can get some play with the pieces on the c file. His king is still in the centre. His king is wandering around in the middle of the board. And there should be some way to get at it. Well, I don't like it. I don't think this pawn sacrifice was sound. But what could I have done? I'm stuck with it now. Oh well, make the best of a bad job. Hope he loses on time. He's taken almost another half hour of his time. He's only got half an hour left for all his moves. So, knight f6. It's interesting the way Keane's playing this game. He seems very much more to be reacting to events rather than trying to dictate it. That's why he's getting such a bad position here. Even early in the game, when he let the white pawn advance to f5, uh, he was just sitting around waiting for things to happen. But this, this break on the queen side with b5, I think that giving up a pawn was the right idea. At least he's got some play now for his pieces. Mm. Well, we'll go back to the game, and it's Kintaros White to play his 43rd move. He's defending very well. He's attacking me now. I still have very good position, but real life he's defending fantastic. What can I do now? I, I should protect with my rook or with my queen? I should play g5. Maybe g5 is very aggressive, but after he jump in g4, then I have to move the queen. But then he going to capture this black bishop that I like very much, so I never going to give to him this black bishop. No, I have to protect the pawn, either with the rook or the queen. My god, only half an hour to to do all the moves. Yes, I have to decide right now. Queen f3. Yes, it's a very solid move. And he's also taken away any chance of some trap with a knight coming to e4. Anyway, I've got the time to get rid of this, this rotten bishop on e8. It's blocking all my pieces in. So I take on b5. Bishop takes b5. Now if I take with a pawn, maybe I can pass a pawn. Yeah, but then he going to play queen a5 and then going to bring the rooks and my king in the middle of the board. No, that is not good. I, I can't even play that. I have to take with the rook. The only move. I have to take with the rook and I have to hurry up because only 20 minutes left for all the game. Yes, rook take b5. Now he's threatening to take away my knight on c5. Well, of course, he'd have to give up his very strong bishop, his dark-squared bishop, to do that, but then he'd be in a, two pawns up. And I think one pawn is enough at the moment. I think I have to reinforce this knight. And I've got to reinforce this in such a way as to make sure I keep a piece on c5. I've got to keep the c-file open. My only chance is to put a queen and a rook on the c-file, and then try to break into his position somehow. Well, the position on the king side is still hopeless. In the long run, I can't stop this avalanche with g5 and f6. So there's no point trying to hold it up. We'll see what happens. Meanwhile, my chances are on the queen's side. Knight, f6 to d7. Yeah, that is the best. He protected the knight because I was threatening to take this knight, but... Now I have to put all the pawns there in the king side. Yes, I have to do it now. So he doesn't have a space at all in the king side. G5. That's it. I've been waiting for this for ages. Now it's come. He's threatening to play h5 and blast the king side totally. I've got to block it. Even though it means saying goodbye to my bishop for a while. Well, h6 to h5, it's a forced move, h5. Well, what happens if I play f6 now? He will sacrifice maybe, yes, he will sacrifice for two pawns and maybe another pawn will... No, maybe I should let him do that. Maybe I should put first my rook and protect the pawn of f6 because he cannot take. No, he cannot take an f5 because I I can give him mate and two, taking h5. So it's better I protect, I don't let him sacrifice the piece then. 
Yes. Rook f1. Why didn't he play f6? Probably he thought I'd sacrifice a piece there. Maybe he's forgotten that he's one pawn up already. So I'd only have one pawn for the piece. Well, this move rook f1's a wasted move. I just get on with the game on the queen side. He's given me a whole extra tempo. Queen c7. Ah, he knows. He, now I can play f6. Ah, but now what happened? I know the idea. He go with a rook and c8 and... Now my king is unprotected. Ah, but I doesn't have time because I'm going to play f6 first and he go with rook c8, I will take the knight and protect with my queen my knight and c3. Yeah, okay, this is a move. f6. Of course. And he could have done it last move as well. Well, this is the end of my bishop for some time to come. But maybe we'll see it in the next instalment. Perhaps I can sacrifice it in f6 later on. But for the moment, bishop h8 is forced. Well, while we wait for the next instalment, Bill, let's have a little interlude and you can take us through the next few moves. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that poor old bishop is really buried in the corner. Well, let's see how the game went on. Yeah, white's just doubling rooks on this file. But Keane's really got some counterplay now. Attacking down, yes, he was trying to gang up on these two pieces and the knight's now moved away. Now attacking the extra pawn. Rook defending it. And black's very active here, but the problem is this, this bishop's dead permanently. Getting the king out of the centre now, Kinteros. Knight attacks the rook. Again, yeah, the rook had to go back to defend this bishop. Knight comes back attacking that pawn again. The safety of his king, Kinteros giving up his extra pawns. So Keane's won the pawn back now. He's really fighting back in this game. But what's he going to do with this bishop? That's what I want to see. Still, queens and rooks very active. I think Kinteros is going to have to win this game all over again. Looked as though he'd, he'd won it. Now the rook's trying to come in. Queen being forced back. Bishop attacking the queen again. Queen moving away. Trying to break through with an attack on this f7 pawn. The queen attacking the knight now. Now it's getting very precarious for Keane now. Kinteros has the initiative again. Well, let's go back to the game with Raymond Keane Black to play his 57th move and see just how unhappy he is about what's going on. Well, this is great. I get the, get the impression I'm escaping from this mess. I've got the pawn back. My rook on a4 is very active. He's only got four minutes left on his clock to finish the whole game in. All I've got to do is solve this minor problem about the knight on d7, which is attacked. Now, what can I do with it? Ah, oh, yes. Maybe this problem isn't so minor after all. Um, where can it go? I don't want to play knight takes b6. Unless he can uh, rage along the seventh rank. Chop me to bits if I do that. But where can I put it? If I put it on f8... Maybe he could play rook takes f7 check. Oh, Christ. Perhaps I should sacrifice a piece. Maybe maybe knight takes f6. Get a couple of pawns for the piece. I've been intending to sacrifice a piece in f6 ever since he played the move. <sighs> well, I've only got a bit more time than he has now. I don't like to sacrifice an f6 yet. I must get rid of the bishop. Knight takes b6. I don't like it, but, well, I'm going to lose time if I don't do something soon. Knight takes b6. Mmm, fantastic. I'm very lucky. I was afraid he'd take an FC. What can I do then? Yes, now, now, now it's okay for me. Yes, but I have only four minutes. I have to take right away. With which rook? I think I should take with the rook and b2. Yeah, because my threat is queen e6. That is my threat. Rook, take b6. It's the only way to recapture. Now maybe I can get away with rook takes e4. Oh no! Oh Christ, he's got queen e6 if I do that. Queen e6. Um, hmm. 
going to stop Queen E6, King G8. Oh, you have very good move. I I should simplify the position. Yes, the bishop doesn't work at all. I should play Queen to Rook and then I play Rook B8. Yes, that is the move. He's gone mad. He's gone completely mad. He could have won with Rook E7. It's the time pressure. Maybe I still have a chance. Perhaps I can sacrifice my bishop in the end game. Queen takes c8. Yes, I have to take back my queen, rook b8. Queen takes b8. Yes, rook b8, chag. Where go the king? No choice, king h7. And now they're, they're getting really panicky. They, ha they have no time left. And remember, the, the time rules for this, for this tournament are very different from normal ones. They have to play all their moves now, and they only have a couple of minutes left. So let's see what's happening. The knight defending this e-pawn. Black's giving some checks. Every move by Black is valuable here because Kinteros has so little time question of whether he can win this position. King's hiding behind the knight. And now, at last, that bishop comes out, giving itself up for one pawn. And the rook's now attacking the second pawn. It can't be defended, so he's getting two pawns for the bishop. Or can White win this position? This d6 pawn is the crucial weakness. Sometime you'll have to bring this knight round to attack the pawn on d6. I think that's the only plan. It's heading that way. King just waiting, that's all he can do. The knight's coming around, now the threat's knight b5. Ah, black trying to get counterplay. D6 pawns gone. Now there's no question that White's winning this position, but has he time? Maybe a minute left on his clock. Well, let's go and see the last dying seconds of this game on the board of the players. Kinteros just had to move on a reflex now. There's no time to think. If he thinks his, his flag will fall, he's repeating. The king coming the centre to chase the rook away. Ah, King's got counterplay. King's side pawn's advancing. Any chance at all for King here? Oh, uh, maybe. Kinteros has just given up one pawn, but it's that D pawn, that one he's just pushed, that that's, has to win the game for him. Ah, oh, so many checks. And the D pawn's within one square of becoming a queen now. There it is, the new queen. Taken. Yeah. Now he's having to, to mate with the knight. Which is a difficult mate at the best of times, but none of this sort of bits condition. Ah, but yeah, we're there. That's mate. Mm -hmm. And a very spectacular end to the game. Right, this is the position in Group B as a result of that. Uh, Lobron leads by a clear half point. Quinteros is in contention, keen virtually out of it. Uh, in fact, mathematics being what it is, we could have a four-way tie in that group. Next week, we're going back to Group A, where they've played all their second-round games, and we shall see a match between the top and bottom player, Christensen, the American who's leading the group against Nigel Short, who won last year but just isn't doing quite so well this year. So until next week, Larry Christensen against Nigel Short from all of us here in Bristol. Good night. <laughs>